Uh, the delayed autumn budget now just two weeks away and Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and his Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, they're under huge pressure to address that £50 billion black hole in the nation's finances. Guess what? They're looking at raising taxes even more on the sale of assets such as shares and property. They're also potentially going to introduce an increase in taxes on people's share dividends in a move that would come as a blow to entrepreneurs and lots of people, actually. They're also reviewing large infrastructure projects, including a major high-speed rail line in northern England. That will go down well in the Red Wall. However, in the last hour, Downing Street has said the construction of the Sizewell C nuclear plant will go ahead after all. Well, let's cross over to Westminster now and speak to GB News political reporter Olivia Utley. Olivia. Hello. Um, so, yeah, Olivia, yes, um, the look, pictures... Can I just interrupt? Sorry. There's also going to be no storm in election before Christmas. The Northern Ireland Secretary has confirmed. Uh, but, but if we could talk about the economy and that spending, it's November the 17th. It's going to be... It was delayed from Halloween, partly because they didn't want those awful headlines about Halloween and the cartoonist joy. But it's going to be more unremitting pain for all sorts of families, pensioners, the lot. It does sound like it will be pretty much unremitting pain. We're being warned at the moment that the government is trying to make up a £50 billion black hole, as it's called, in public finances. And it's being threatened that they're going to do that with a mixture of 50% tax rises, so £25 billion worth of tax rises, and 50% public sector cuts. That might be a little bit of an exaggeration at this time before a budget we often see chancellors and prime ministers softening the ground, as it were. So when it comes to the actual budget, it may not be quite as bad as that. And the hope is that we'd all feel that we've actually been rather well done by. But it does look pretty painful. They're talking at the moment about raising capital gains tax, that tax on... Uh, assets that are being sold. They're thinking about raising it in line with income tax. Obviously, very bad news for investors, savers, entrepreneurs. There's already been a big backlash against business leaders. But it's very hard to see what other wiggle room they have. Uh, they're going to raise corporation tax, which is something that both the Prime Minister and Jeremy Hunt said that they were going to lower during their election campaign. So it's hard to see how they're going to square that with the public. Then on the other side, in terms of public sector cuts, there's talk about them raising public sector pay by only 2%. Well, remember, of course, the unions are demanding a 10% rise in public sector pay in line with inflation. So that would go down very, very badly indeed. Uh, although some in the private sector may feel that it's actually quite low-hanging fruit because, of course, private sector wages aren't rising by anything like as high as inflation. The other option, as was discussed in the bulletin, is the uh, cuts to public infrastructure. Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak, when they were in government, made a lot of promises about new infrastructure for the country, which is all part of that big levelling up agenda, which was obviously central to the Conservative 2019 manifesto and integral to the Conservatives winning the, winning the red wall. So again, making cuts there is going to be very, very, very difficult. Basically, whichever way the Chancellor and the Prime Minister turn, they come up against a big brick wall and it feels as though any changes that they make are going to be pretty much politically unpalatable in the House of Commons. One thing they can do, of course, we've already seen one windfall tax on the energy companies. We saw the huge profits made by BP this week. What was it? £7 billion for one quarter. They could apply another windfall tax. It would be hugely popular with the voters. And those banks are doing pretty well, too. There could be a windfall tax on the banks. And before people throw their hands up in horror, they should be reminded that Mrs Thatcher, who I was a great fan, in the 1980s had a windfall tax on the energy companies and the banks. Yes, they could do that, and it looks like they probably will do that. They're, it looks, sounds like they're going to extend the windfall tax to 2028, I think it is, and raise it to up to 30%. I mean, the problem there is, of course, there are lots of pro-growth, Thatcherite, small-c conservatives who would absolutely hate that, who feel that it's just not a free market policy and that it'll prevent those big oil and gas companies which are very important for employment in this country. It'll prevent them investing here. They'll just decide that they can go abroad. And if you bear in mind as well that Brexit was supposed to be a, a way of getting the UK setting its own tax laws to make it very, very competitive. So there are lots of people who would argue that that is totally not conducive to, to growth and not particularly right of a Conservative government. That said, I expect they will do that because it is a very easy way to get money into the Treasury coffers quickly, which is what they need right now.